Hello, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Mel and Gakadi, the podcast where three friends come together and break down what's new in the Japanese music industry. This is the podcast for the week of June 19th, 2020. I'm your host, Ken, and with me we have Gray. What's happening, dudes? And unfortunately, that's it. It is another Dos Compadres episode right now. Right now, Luna is watching a double feature of Robocop. Yes. I'm kind of jealous. I am deeply jealous. I love... I love RoboCop 1 and 2, and 3 is a movie that, that exists. <laughs> but yes, 1 and 2 is specifically 1. Like, 1's a classic. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. That, that's close to my heart. Like, growing up as a kid, I had the replica RoboCop water gun. I would run around the yard shooting people with that. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, let's continue on to what we've been listening to. Let's start with you, Gray. Yeah, uh, it has it's been a really slow week for me. I, I have been dealing a lot of real estate stuff, and I just I have not had an opportunity to really listen to a whole lot. Uh, I have been listening to next week's MC, so we will have to talk about that next week. But I've been listening to that a little bit, and it's been a little fun. And other than that, I think I listened to like one color creation song this week. And that's been about it. What have you been listening to, bud? So I've been listening to Kumiko Yanagida's latest track, Crazy Baby, which was released on digital media. Uh, Necessary by Maiko Fujita. Uh, a couple beaver, uh, Super Beaver stuff, because we'll get on that a little bit later. A little bit of addiction going back to that and a little bit of a triple a but not too much besides that so but with that let's continue on to the articles here and the first one is going to be the lovely bish who announced that they will be releasing their first best of album for live bish best on july 8th and was this release was originally set to be only released during their 5G tour, which was planned to take place this past year. But due to everything that's going on, they had to postpone the event and postpone the release. But not to put a damper on their fifth anniversary in the industry, the group announced that they will make the album publicly across the country. So you can go check that out. It's on their official website if you guys are interested so you can check all that lovely info out on our site and then continuing on up the lovely five member idol group Kamiyado once again breaks off into a little subsection and announced that they will be releasing their track sister this past week across all digital music streaming platforms this comes after the success of their subgroup for eraser that was a couple weeks prior and what's interesting is that the Hamashima sisters Mei and Miki will be joined together for this release you can check out all the information about this on our site along with the music video for sisters on our site as well moving on up to our next article we're going to be talking about singer Miyakawa-kun as he's dropped a teaser for his latest mini album called Symbol uh, the new mini album is set to be released on July 8th. It's going to come out in three editions, a standard and limited, and a limited edition with a Blu-ray. So if you're a fan of Miyakawa-kun and you really like his work, this is definitely something worth checking out. And uh, the uh, teaser is uh, very teasing indeed. It's, it's very interesting and I kind of enjoyed it. So I'm really looking forward to this. And then continuing on up, it is the lovely Japanese reggae vocalist DJ775 debuted her first EP, Kenochi, on April 29th. Kenochi features the lead track, Yote Asahi, and infuses her lovely reggae storm and trial throughout. You can check out all the information about that, along with the music video for the track as well on our site. Moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about girl metal band Love Bites, as they have announced they're going to be releasing a live recording from their performance in January at Zep Diver Tokyo as part of their Five of a Kind Live in Tokyo 2020 tour. The performance is going to be released in DVD and Blu-ray, but also, and interestingly enough, it's getting a CD release, so if you want just, like, the audio version of it, uh, you can get that as well, and it's a pretty meaty collection, so this is definitely something worth checking out, and 
In the article, we have a little promotional video for those who are interested. Continuing on up is the up-and-coming vocalist Little Leaf Spud Gold announced that she will be releasing a brand new track called Ananeda across all digital music streaming platforms. This is her latest release by the artist since her track 24 Rules of last year and was her first release in 2020. You can check out more information along with the link for across all digital streaming music platforms on our site as well. And then continuing on up to the singer-slash-songwriter Kanya takes Fan on a lovely love trip with her latest single, I Tabi, which was released back on June 3rd. This was Crayon's second single and first release since 2018, and you can check out more information about this on our site, as long as the TV spot for I Tabi as well. DJ and trap master Yo Igarashi announced that he will be releasing a brand new EP Love across all digital music streaming platforms. This was his latest release by the artist since his pink EP back in 2018 and is his second EP overall. You can check out more information about that along with the track Empty Room featuring Hamdal and Kimmy Doll on our site as well. All right, moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about Rock Band, my first story. As they have announced, they're going to be dropping a brand new single titled One Million Times, which is set to drop on July 1st. What makes this single special is it's going to be uh, featuring Chelly from Egoist, who is a popular pop duo, I guess would be the best way to describe Egoist. Uh, so yes, if you are a fan of Egoist or if you're a fan of My First Story, this is definitely something for you to check out. Also, if you've never heard of My First Story, we have their music video mukoku for those of you who are uninitiated to get a little taste of them and see if you like them and then once again continuing on up with music corner alum bish announced that they will be re releasing a brand new single called letters on july 22nd being dubbed their 3.5 major label album this quote-unquote super single will drop with seven tracks total and include popular hits such as tomorrow and buchi nuke which will serve as the opening theme for the fantasy anime kingdom and the Ending theme song for the comedy show Super Rascal Gag Family, respectively. You can check out all the information about this on our site, as long with the pre-order link as well. And continuing on up, it is the lovely up-and-coming rapper Young Donuts, or Donut, announced that he'll be releasing his very first album Raps of Young Donuts on June 24th. This will be his first physical release, and will include the... Digi original digitally released tracks of Wooden Swords and Ichiro is Bibei. You can check out all the information about that on our site along with the teaser trailer for this for the album as well. It's interesting. I was watching this and I'm like, I, I feel like I was tripping balls and I need donuts after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you were just hungry. Yeah, maybe I was just hungry. But... Continuing on up, the lovely Music Corner alum Cider Girls announced that they will be bringing a brand new track for the second season of the popular shonen anime Fire Force, which will air in July. This will be the latest release done by the band since their Soda Pop Fan Club 3 album back in January and will be their fifth single overall. You can check out more information about this on our site, along with the audio track for their song Kore Kara on our site as well. So, yay, Fire Force, I guess. I don't I don't know. I haven't, I haven't finished it. Oh, my God. Season 1 is fan, fantastic. I, I am hyped for Season 2. It's, can't wait. And continuing on up to the four-member hybrid rock band Bye Bye Han no Hoteshiki announced that they will be releasing a brand new mini album titled Flowers and will drop on September 9th. This will be the latest release done by the band since their EP Aito Yuazu... Uran to Yonde back in November of last year and will be their third mini album overall. Uh, they also announced that this will be their first release with their new label No Big Deal Records, which a deal which was signed back in February. You can check out more information about that on our site along with the lyric video for the track Harachiru Hibasa on our site as well. But yeah, that's all for it for the news here and because it's only me and you this time. Let's have our usual talk of what we've been kind of listening or playing and watching as of late. So 
Why don't you go on first, Gray? Yeah, it's uh, been exciting times. Today was the first time in, I want to say like two weeks, I've been able to finally sit down and get a little further in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I'm getting really close to the end. I'm in the middle of chapter eight right now. So uh, chapter eight of 10. So like we're getting like right at the end of the game where we're, like, the, the, the villains are making their move. Uh, the protagonist is close to reaching his goal. It's very exciting stuff. And probably when we finish recording, I'm going to go back to playing that. But yeah, that... Th- Again, uh, I don't know if I've recommended this game yet or not, but if you have a Nintendo Switch, I do recommend Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It is a fantastic game. The story is great. The vistas in it are fantastic. There's every new location in the game. I just like stand there for two minutes just looking at it in awe and wonder. And then I realized like also like the whole area loads at once and like the load times for this game are really short. They're like 10 seconds a piece. And the fact that you can run from one end of a map to another and never experience the load screen is just fan is just crazy because these maps are huge. I mean, huge. And it, it's just crazy. So definitely recommend Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'm really really looking to pick up xenoblade chronicles one here within the next week or so so because i never played it i i really really wanted to play it for the wii but never kind of got around to it and i never bought it for the 3ds so this will be my first time playing it and i can't wait i am looking forward to that so other than that i have uh monday i went out i bought promar which is studio triggers uh movie and it's really really good if you like Fire Force, it's also about spontaneous human combustion, like Fire Force is, but it's it takes it has its own unique spin on it, and it winds up being a really good movie. I would I like honestly, like I've seen some of Studio Trigger's older stuff. Like I liked I liked Gurren Logan. I don't love it as much as everybody else, but I did enjoy it. And I've I've tried to get into Kill a Kill, but I for me, like that series has never landed. And I, I I did enjoy Darling in the Franks, but I wasn't able to keep up with it. And I hear that that series kind of goes off the rails near the end. But I will say, like, as far as Studio Trigger goes, Promar is visually like one of like the coolest movies I've ever seen. And it's just full of their style and flair. And honestly, if they stopped doing long running anime and just started doing movies, I don't think I'd complain. I think there's a lot of their fan base that would, but I don't think I would. I think, I I, I think them doing movies is perfect because two hours you get a really good experience, you get really lovable characters, you get that flair that they're known for, and then you can get out. It, it is like pretty solid. So definitely recommend Promar. It was a lot of fun, and uh, my girlfriend who. It really isn't into anime. I've been watching a couple of shows with her. Uh, we just finished season one of The Rising of the Shield Hero, and she really enjoyed that. Uh, she she likes um, uh, LARPing, so like she has a LARP that she goes to once a month, and uh, so I figured like you know she would enjoy like a good isekai, and I really loved Rising of the Shield Hero last year, and so I, I we sat down and watched that, and she wound up loving that. Uh, we're getting ready to pick back up my My Hero Academia. We watched the first fifty episodes of it, and her sister's a huge My Hero fan, and uh, her sister's roommate's a huge My Hero fan, and I'm a huge My Hero fan. So, so my girlfriend's kind of like, well, I guess I'll watch My Hero Academia, but she wound up loving it because because <laughs> you know that you know it's it's a lovable show, but uh, yeah. So like we're we've watched fifty episodes of it. And um, we're gonna pick back. We're gonna pick that back up soon, hopefully. So that, that I'm looking forward to that. And uh, let's see. That's about everything that I've been doing as of late. What have you been getting into, bud? Uh so man, let's see. Anime wise, I well, they finally started continuing up again with Major Second, which is the sequel to the popular baseball anime Major. It was long running. It was like from the like the eighties, eighties, nineties originally. But oh, the nice. the sequel is kind of from the modern day, and it's the the sun. So they and they they kind of prelude and draw similarities with the sun and the 
the original character his 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 father and it's really interesting uh because of of everything that was going on they delayed the the episodes like a bit but then they finally are continuing on with that for the second season i was actually a huge fan of the first season a couple years ago and i was happy that they brought it back and a couple of CUs that i actually like are actually going to be in the second season so i'm i'm quite happy for that after that i've been watching another series called sing yesterday for me which is really really good and it's based off of really popular manga the the only thing that I have a little bit of problem with is the pacing. It's because the manga spanned over five years, and I don't know if they had the money to do that story entirely in justice. <laughs> yeah, so. well, I don't know. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's been on my radar, kind of low key, and uh, I, yeah, I've been I've been kind of interested in it, but I haven't had a chance to it check is, it out yet. But it's really really slice of life so i kind of am i kind of know how you are with slice of life it's like hit or miss with you kind of thing true but if there's like a music angle it's a lot easier for me to get into no it's it's not it's it's not it's based off a the the title is based off a novel that kind of is oh okay because it's called seeing yesterday with you i yeah that's what i I I was like a music uh, a musical anime because i was like i had originally thought that too but then i was like oh it's super slice of life but it's it's probably the most relatable story I have ever watched personally. Yeah. So this is this is how I like I I really do like Slice of Life and and I know how you are with it. Yeah, it, so it can be hit and miss. It's, it's kind of hard to it's it's kind of hard to recommend something like this. Yeah, because if you're I, not in the mood, I, for I was it. like I was like I loved your lie in April, and that's that's kind of slice of lifey sort of. Mm-hmm. I know that's more about pianos and music and stuff like that which is what i loved about it there's been uh, yeah yeah it, it's hit and miss there's been a couple of slice of life animes that i i have enjoyed uh it, it would i don't think it'll ever be my, my favorite genre but you know if, if if enough people come to me and tell me to to, to give it a watch i would i will i will definitely give it a try so I, I'm, I'm i am open-minded even if that's not my favorite genre i'm like eh, you, you never know like you you could wind yeah, up liking man. it uh, game wise, uh, you can kind of listen to what I've been doing through Potosaurus, but I've been doing a lot of things with that. Uh, recently, I just beat Horizon Zero Dawn, and yeah, if, I'm gonna talk about the PlayStation Five announcement for the trailer for Forbidden West. It it spoils one thing, and it's kind of like a character is just like, oh, okay, so you're gonna be the bad kind of thing now. So unless you saw him in the game originally, you, yeah, you'll be kind of a little spoiled about it. So like when I watched the trailer for that, for the PS5 announcement, I just got to the point where that character was introduced. <laughs> and I was just like, ah, okay. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so I'm just like, um, it's just a minor spoiler kind of thing. And- Cause it's it, from how it seems like it, it, it how it's going. It, I'm like, oh, okay, I can see this a mile away, and it kind of does happen like that. Yeah, like I only played the first half of. I, I guess it's the first half. I told you where I where I wound up landing at the end of it, so you would be the better arbiter of how far I got in that game. Yeah, you're you're about about halfway through because there's like two or three big steps, and when I got to it, I was about three fourths of the way, and I'm just like a good enough two and a half to three hours more, yeah I, I would say I'd, I'd like to pick it up more and I'd, I'd like to go back and pick it up because it's it is a fun game i like the the combat mechanics in it i thought it played great the world was interesting i i don't remember yeah learning about the world which i did ended up liking a whole lot more was just like wow it's really interesting and to see kind of what happened yeah and how the world ended up becoming like that was very interesting so yeah the story is it looked like it was going in an interesting direction but where where i left off like there's one part of the game where like you have to go all like all the way across to the other side of the map and it just took so long i i just kind of lost interest in it and i was wasn't yeah, able yeah, to keep yeah. it up but uh i do want to go back and play it because i do want to play the second one so i i will beat zero dawn at some point i, I will say that playstation 5 uh thing was really exciting that like i i was thoroughly impressed i've never been that excited for a ratchet and clank game <laughs> 
Yeah, and that was literally their thing of, hey, we're going to show off the high speed capacity and how much RAM this thing can run on because it was loading instantly. So, which is good. Yeah, so. and that, that's a gorgeous game too. Like, like it looks great. And yeah, I, I'm I'm very excited. I think the game I'm most excited for is the remake to Demon Souls. Like, I think that's mm-hmm. the one that I think I'm most excited for. Because I played the first one because I got it for free uh, through the PlayStation Plus subscription. So I have the first yeah. one and I played around for it for a little bit and it didn't quite sink in. But uh, since then, I've played Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne. I, I actually have the Platinum Trophy for Bloodborne. So I've, I've gotten a more of a taste for that style of combat and gameplay. And so I, I do want to go back and play the first one, but th- this new one, it looks so pretty. I was like, you know what? I might just wait for the new one and just do it that way. <laughs> so I, I, I am excited. I was, I don't know, the whole time I kept, I kept wanting to hear the next FromSoft game because, uh, what was it, Elven Ring, I think is the next one that they're doing. And I think that got announced like two years ago and we haven't seen hide or hair of it since. And I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of like eager to see when that game's going to pop back up. But, you know, we'll uh, we'll wait and see. What what other games were you excited for from the PS5 announcement? Uh, obviously, Horizon was one of them. And that, that was the only one that kind of piqued my interest. I mean, I, I'm probably going to talk more about this in length on Pontosaurus because, well, I don't know. Timber doesn't watch anything and Kill is scatterbrained. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if... Uh, I'm going to have a fairly, fairly good discussion about it, but I am going to discuss about the the announcement overall. And it, it was decent. Uh, obviously, the whole thing with Sony and Microsoft playing literally Cold War on the pricing is getting somewhat annoying, but I, I understand. Yeah. So. Well, well, Microsoft learned the lesson last time. If you announce your price first and then, the, and then your competitor undercuts you, it hurts you <laughs> in the long run. So, the, so I think they learned that lesson last time, and so they're they're waiting to see what Sony's going to do, and Sony's waiting to see what they're going to do. Someone's going to have to make the. First it wasn't. Move. S- it wasn't so much the pricing; it was the fact that also it came with the Connect, and the always online thing was the huge hiccup when it first was announced and sony literally fired back with an iphone video saying this is how you trade games to your friends and it was just passing a disc and that was just gg on sony's part so they're kind of riding high so sony or microsoft had three big things going against them during the announcement of the xbox one and they might be playing safe with the price but I won't know until they do their game thing what what's going to happen. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I am, I'm eager to see because uh, specs-wise, the Xbox is more powerful. But usually my, my contention and why I usually stick with a Sony console is if there's an Xbox game I really, really want to play, I can usually find it on PC. So... Uh, that's always kind of been like my my where where I just draw the lines. Like you know, if I want to play a PlayStation exclusive, you have to have the PlayStation console. And there's there's a couple exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, that that's a hard rule that they stick to. And a lot of the Xbox games eventually get ported over to PC. So, but I'm interested to see if if because I think this generation is going to be the late. Like, the debate what's what matters more like console exclusives or raw power so it'll be interesting to see how that battle plays out I, i'm well i mean sony played that on the ps3 and it didn't end up working for them overall so this, this whole thing about their system has the overall better specs is kind of they're playing a double-edged sword with that too <laughs> oh yeah 100 percent because if, if specs is like the only thing you care about, you can you can just buy a high end PC that, that outperforms both those boxes. So yeah, no, yeah I mean at this right. point it's, it, it, it's 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 a tower. So <laughs> yeah, the 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 Xbox Series X is is an honest gosh darn tower that's a box. That thing is ugly. I have mixed feelings about the PlayStation Five form factor, but I, I will say at least it looks. Talking like about. 
you got a you got a mini fridge and a futuristic router <laughs> and you, then you go there's a there's a meme of of the PlayStation Five going around online where uh, it has Seto Kaiba's head on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks just like his uh, coat from yeah, the, yeah, Duelist from Kingdom. Anime. So yeah, oh my god, it, I but, I got a kick out of that. Yeah, but yeah. Besides gaming things, I've been just mostly I've been doing a lot of reading. Actually, I've been I been I bought a bunch of light novels and I've been going through that. But, I read through Rascal Doesn't Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. I actually really, really like the anime, so I actually bought that physically too. And the Rascal Does Not um, Dream of Sleeping Girl, I think that's the next one, which is the movie. Yes. So that's uh, that's going to be very interesting. Uh, does Not Dream of Dreaming Girl. There we go. That's what the movie was. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. I really liked the, the novel, and it was a very fast read for me. I read it in four days, which is... I take long to read books. It took me literally a month to read The Witcher, and that's only 314 pages. The first Jeez. book The first book of Rascal was 210 and I read that in four days. So nice. Oh no, I'm a slow reader too. Like it, it, like I average, I think like three minutes to read like ten pages. Some some yeah, obscene so. number like that. Like I'm a, just a normally slow reader. So it, it's it's always been hard for me to get into books. So I mean, after that, I have the the, the my high school is a love snafu. I, I'm I'm started reading that. I read I read all the first volume of Goblin Slayer, which I think your your girlfriend would actually like. You don't need to read the anime or watch the anime. You can read the book. The book is really really good because it yeah the the author is a huge fan of D and D. Oh and yeah, tabletop overall. So oh yeah, I I that's it's on my short list of shows to get my girlfriend to watch, but we have limited time and and other people are feeding her opinions, so I try to get in when I can. Uh, it, it'll and, be interesting how she takes it. I rather read have her read the book than the anime because the first episode is really really intense, super intense. So, I, yeah, I, I love so it. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it might be. I mean, it it is very realistic fantasy, but it is it some some of it kind of gets a little bit overbearing. So. Yeah, well, in like later arcs in the anime, like uh, they actually cut out like key key scenes and, and moments in the story, like uh, the middle arc of the series where they're fighting the sewers underneath ground, uh, where they're under the sewers of that city. I was like. Yeah, S- some aspects of that plot made no sense, and so I had to watch a YouTube video of what they left out in order to fill in some of the blanks because they they had cut out some key aspects of the story. That yeah, I, was just I, like, I, I assume that's what's happening because you're not going to be able to transfer everything from a book into animation or same for a novel or a manga for that. Yeah, that uh, because I noticed that for Rascal because after I read read the first volume i read i rewatch the first three episodes which is basically the first not or the first volume of the novel and they moved things around the pacing was a little little off than from what i remember from the book because the book literally spells out a lot of things while the animation the anime is going to be like well we need a hook for the next episode to explain why why certain things are happening and it ends up being that way kind of thing yeah well, and so another I, I another understand. reason why I wanted to do uh, specifically Rising of the Shield Hero was because seasons two and three have been announced, and so I was like, if we watch season one and she likes it, when season two comes out, we can it's something we can watch together, and and that, that was one reason why I wanted to do that. And I've thought about picking up the light novel series for Shield Hero because that that was originally a light novel series turned manga and then to yeah, anime. Yeah, I I heard it was really good. I've been a part of the light novel little f- fan board there and i've been kind of reading stuff well the next book i'm picking up is konosuba so <laughs> oh, that's supposedly really good konosuba has been on my short list of animes to watch for a long time and i just have not gotten around to it but yeah it's another another series that i would love to read because it's supposed to be just funny and the characters are supposed to be really good and so I, I would that it's on my short list but yeah the thing that i think that shield hero does well is character development like they they have a very interesting world and it takes them forever to 
really do the world building like like they do the world building very very slowly and that turns off a lot of people but i'm one of those people where it's like well you know i don't want to know everything about the world within the first episode because then the plot has nowhere to go so they really drag out the world building like there's new world building aspects being introduced in the last episode of the of the first season of the show and there's still a ton you don't know about so it's really well thought out it's real it's a super long book series i think they're up to like volume like 20 of the light novel series and i think the anime only covers like the first four or five volumes like like the first the first season of the anime does not cover much material and yeah no that's that's usually the bar usually a uh, first like the season covers the first like four to five volumes give or take yeah but yeah i I did see that you got into Rascal, and Rascal loves sim. Was it Rascal loves Bunny Senpai? Uh, Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. That's it. That was another series that got a lot of like. It kept it, getting on my radar because it got, a lot of people loved it, and it, I, I've been it, wanting to get around to watch it. In my point of view, it is this. It's the aughts generation, or not the aughts. It's the teens generation of what Haruhi was to the aughts. If that gotcha. makes any sense, because yeah. it's, it, it redef- uh, well, not redefined, but it was, if you're going to watch or read a, any kind of slice of life with a mysterious aspect that kind of threads throughout, yeah. it, it's, it does that. It does that very, very well. Okay. Yeah. And, um, the melancholy of, uh, Harunahi, I think that's how you say that. Uh, that's all, I've never seen that either. And that's also been on my short list. I got a long short list. So I should call it the long list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at that point, yeah. Yeah, how do he is it's really good and it it is an anime that defined what yeah. slice of life was and, to and be. And I so. I've been told by a lot of people even though slice of life is not my genre, I would really enjoy that because there's a there's a little bit more to it than just here's people going to school. Uh Yeah, so. like there is like a auto auto worldly element. It isn't much, but it's like 10% of what it yeah. needs to be yeah. and yeah, it yeah. drives the plot of what what's going on yeah yeah so so well and i i almost bought the movie because i read like the plot description of the movie and oh the movie's fantastic the, like, the, the movie sounds so good the missing the missing of haruhi yeah it's yeah. really good i've i've watched that i watched that when it appeared in theaters way back when with with renford and I enjoyed the hell out of that movie. Oh yeah, I read I read the plot description of that movie, and I'm like, this is this looks fantastic. But the I I wound up not buying it because I had a gut feeling like it was a sequel to an anime that I was forgetting about. Went home, did my research, and I was like, oh yeah, it's that show I've never seen, and I need to watch that. I because it's a it's a follow up to the anime series. Yeah, it is a big follow up because literally <laughs> it references a lot of things that happen specifically within the second season. So, yeah, yeah I, I, it's, it's interesting. I do want to see that though because it it just it looks it looks fun, but I'll, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. Rascal does not dream of bunny. Senpai is kind of similar in that vein where there's it's like a slice of life, but there's like a a mystery going on. That that might would be really right up my alley too because I I love a good mystery to to, to 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 chew on while you watch a series that that just like it doesn't have to build on it every episode but just like slowly as the series progresses like the mystery kind of unravels like I I love I love anime like that that's usually what I'm looking for when I'm trying to find a new anime yeah like so, I said I think you'll you'll really enjoy Rascal because of that because yeah. It it pretty much the entire mystery of the entire series leads up to the movie, and gotcha. I don't know what they're going to do after that because I haven't watched the movie. The movie just got released June thirtieth in in Seaside, so uh, when that comes out, I'll I am watching it. I already I already bought the pre order, so it's going to come here. And I'm going to enjoy it. And it covers the sixth and seventh volume of the of the book, and it pretty much covers that entire arc. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen next because I think the movie did well enough that they are going to continue. Well, I hope they're going to continue for a second season. 
So, but well, we'll see. I mean, that, there's a couple of things that I've been kind of reading after after this. Like, you'll probably hear me talk about this more on Potosaurus, but after after Horizon, I'm probably going to be going continuing on to Catherine again because I really did like Catherine, and I kind of want to see what they did to Rin, who is the new girl for this one. So, we'll see. We'll see. Another game I never beat. <laughs> I made it to like the third chapter and got stuck on that puzzle and I never got back around to it. Oh yeah, Catherine is amazing. Like the 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 story for Catherine was really good and I've I've enjoyed every piece of it. But yeah, with that lovely little talk that we have here, which I do enjoy. I always love it when it's just me and you sometimes cuz then we can oh, yeah. shoot shoot the shit so to speak and talk about whatever. I don't get to talk about this stuff on another podcast like you do so sometimes like i'm just sitting here because my, my girlfriend's not into video games or anything like that so i don't have anybody to talk to about video games except uh my best friend and he's he's busy with work so i rarely get to talk to him too so it's like sometimes like i was like i don't get to talk about some of the things i really enjoy so i, I get i enjoy it when it's just the two of us because we i get to talk about something i normally don't get to so it's it's always a really nice experience yep 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 but yeah, with that, let's continue on to the Oricon here, and looks all right. <laughs> it, it is. A, it's a very interesting week, I will say. In the beginning, I was really hopeful that this was a sign that the that everything was kind of going back to normal, and then having looked at the numbers, I'm not a hundred percent convinced, but. Uh, you know, I will say we're talking about more than two songs this week. <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, yes. So, and and all the new songs, spoiler alert, pretty solid. Like, I'd recommend buying all all all, all the ones that we're going to talk about that are new. But I, we'll save it for when we're talking about them. But yeah, with that, let's continue on to number ten, and it is highlight slash hitori de ikiteita naba by Super Beaver. So. This is the first time we actually really get to talk about Super Beaver because uh, we they're all right. They're a very solid band, and this is their major label debut with Sony. So this is kind of like a reintroduction to who they are kind of thing, and it was fairly solid. I don't listen to much Super Beaver because of p- personal things that I just find hilarious with their name, but... <laughs> We won't get on that, but it's. I, I want to hear your take on that because this is probably your first exposure to them. Yes, I've seen their name pop up several times, especially like when we're doing like news articles and stuff like that. So you know, I am familiar with the group in in a cursory and pass passing sense. I've never actually listened to their music, but uh, I, I will say both the, both these songs right here are fantastic. I really really like, especially highlight. I felt like it was just a delight so to speak. I love the melody. I love the vocal work in it. I just thought it was a really, really fun tune to listen to. And I had a blast listening to it. I, I thought it was, I, it was fantastic. I, I'm actually kicking myself. I didn't download it when I was listening to it. I'll probably do that when we get off the, off the air. So I, I can go back, double back and download it. So I have it to listen to on repeat because it, it, it was a lot of fun and really, really liked it. Regardless, Highlight and Hitori de Ikteita Nareba sold a lovely 13,053 points. Continue on. Once again, it is more and more by twice. We, we said all we needed to last week about it. It's, it's still a fairly solid track. I got to actually talk to my, my friend who's a big Twice fan about this. And he kind of gave me his lovely opinion about it. And I, I, I did bring up your little criticism about, well, it the... the, the the music is so minimalistic and he goes yeah i can see your point there and it's it's good for them to kind of do that because apparently a lot of their stuff have been so reliant on the bombastic on the composition yeah and that's why he felt like this change that they kind of did was something kind of interesting yeah and i was working on an article earlier this week uh with twice and so i got to hear their upcoming japanese release single and I, I don't know, it made me think twice. I, I didn't actually go back and listen to more and more, but it made me think twice about this single because I was like, there's some aspects of it that are carried over to that song a little bit, but 
I would say like the the newer song is more of what I like twice for. Mm-hmm. But I there, see, I see. but there's still like some more and more elements sprinkled in there. So so it, it's kind of like got that DNA of it. So I don't, I need to honestly. Part of me feels like I should go back and re-listen to it, give it another chance because I do like it sometimes. Like when the uh, when people carry the melody through like their vocal work which is what they were doing and more and more so i'm thinking like i don't know maybe i was expecting something a little different than what i got which is maybe why i didn't like it so much last week so i'm, I'm probably going to go back and listen to this and if it's on the charts next week i i can give an updated opinion on if i if i change my mind or not but yeah yeah it, it's still here i'm glad to see these girls doing good and um, looking forward to talk about them again soon. Yeah. Regardless, more and more, this week's so they lovely 13,154 points and continuing on up to I Love by Official Hige Dondism, which is good. It's the first time that it went under its pre- predecessor, <laughs> but it's it's a solid track nonetheless. Once again, it's still their best track of the year and probably yep. one of the best tracks in overall in the year and that tells you kind of what's going on with this year <laughs> it, it's been a slow year i, I was kind of lamenting this to uh my girlfriend the other day i was like i was like and, and i don't think it's entirely japan's fault i i think uh you know the current crisis has had a lot to do with it and and everything but it, it has been a pretty slow year as far as like new releases go and i was thinking like you know like if we had to do the top five today, I'd be like, well, there'd be like three songs maybe on there, definitely. And then there'd be like my four and five would be songs I kind of like. <laughs> yeah, so. same for me. I currently probably have three songs that definitely are in the 2020 mix. And one of them is is going to be I Love, obviously, because I've talked so highly about it. And another one is probably another Polka Dot Singer song. It's probably on there. It's there. There's like couple shining spots, but overall, this wasn't like last year where I really definitively knew that there was going to be a song here. I'm I'm only betting on one or two, if that, that are probably going to carry over to the end of the year. We're halfway through the year, and it's it, the the later half could surprise us, kind of. Thing. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. There's still a lot of time in the year left to really razzmatazz us and really dazzle us. So. It'll be exciting to see what the rest of the year bears out. Regardless, I love So They Lovely 13,452 points. And continuing on to number seven, it is Pretender by Official Hige Dondism. It's good. It's It came back up yep. again, so good for yep. them. And this week, it sold a lovely 13,635 points. Continuing on up to number six, it is Brava, Brava, Brava. And Ray of Light by J. John. So this is interesting because we did talk about Ray of Light on yeah. our anime episode. So, yes. And it, was it you or was it Luna that talked more about it? I think it was Luna. I think um, Luna. But I remember this song hit number one back in January when it launched. So yeah. I, I I honestly forgot about it. But uh, both Ray of Light and Brava Brava Brava. I, I don't think you need the third Brava. Like, Brava Brava works, but Brava 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 is just too much. But crit- <laughs> criticizing the, the name of the song beside, like, both the songs were, were pretty good. And I know she's a Jay Young fan. She she loves him. And yeah. I, I feel like I, I should check out more of his work because I feel like every time he's popped up on the Oricon, I, I have enjoyed it. But I've never gone back and really listened to any of it. So I'm kind of glad I got this reminder. I need, I need to write down Jay Young so I, I can go back and give him a listen and uh, and and go back and see what else he has because he, he's pretty solid. He's a pretty good vocalist overall, and he, he's got he's got the pipes. So yeah, I mean his he's fairly successful in his own right, and Jay John is his solo career has been really really solid as of right now, and this is just showing that he does belong into the industry as a solo artist oh yeah so it's good it's good it's very solid and overall i i did like our reintroduction so to speak to brava 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 and ray of light see what i'm saying like that third brava really throws you doesn't it it's like i feel like no i mean i understand but (laughs) it's it is it's it stands out kind of thing yeah it does it does stand out i'll give it that 
Regardless, this week it sold a lovely 14,326 points. And continuing on up to number 5, it is Stand Up by Cho, Cho, Cho Tokyo. So, this is very interesting. So, this, obviously for me, this was definitely number 2. Because they did something that I never thought that they would. They did a fairly interesting style change. They mixed it up. And while it might not be for a lot of the fans or for people in general, uh, it's very interesting to see them mix it up to this kind of offbeat rap, you can say, style. Yeah. <laughs> I I, I, it's kind of hard to explain without you guys listening to it. It is available on Apple Music and Spotify, so go check that out. It's interesting to kind of hear that style change because you, th- you think of Cho Tokyo and you think of... Uh, just standard boys pop and that's what they're mostly famous for but stand up kind of mixed it up and it was very interesting it might not be for everyone but it shows to me that they are looking to not be a one hit or one sound kind of group which i don't mind at all yeah no uh i i will say this is my song of the week Uh, i i love number one i thought i think number one's fantastic we'll get to that but this song just, ooh, it, it just, it hit the right notes. I love the melody of it. I love the vocal work that these guys had. And I, I will, like, I do have one small criticism for Stand Up is in the middle of the song, they literally drop the beat. And I was like, eh, I could do without that part. <laughs> like, 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 you could just kind of skip that. Other than that, though, it's pretty solid song all in all. And uh, the B track for that, it has like this really cool swing vibe to it, which is a lot of fun. So I, I really, really enjoyed this. I, th- I thought it was a lot of fun. Definitely. It was, it was one of the songs where it's like when I heard it, I was listening to it through Apple music, thankfully. And so I was just able to immediately, you know, hit the plus button and download it. So it, it was just good. I really, really enjoyed this. I thought these guys were fantastic. And I, I know we've talked about them before, but, uh, I, I could not tell you my old opinions on any of their music, but I am eager to go check them out and to give them a listen, like like their older stuff, and, and see how generic they are. Because I might really, really, really love them if they're super generic. <laughs> now, you, you mentioned that you did like them. Okay. The handful of times that we kind of did talk about them that just reinforces and, the fact i need to go back and listen to more of their music <laughs> yeah and like i said this is your your thing where pretty much any boy band that wasn't johnny's after the johnny's jr bring up you ended up really really liking. <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it's 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 weird i like i remember growing up as a kid i spent a lot of my time hating boy bands and and for to be a like a i'm not middle-aged yet but i'm getting there so I'll say a middle-aged adult and just be in love with boy bands. I, I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> Welcome to the Japanese music industry. <laughs> I, I mean, they're great. They're fantastic. I mean, the thing that, and I think the thing that I like about boys groups a little bit more than girls groups is boy groups tend to focus a lot more on the vocals, not, not trying to throw shade at girl groups or anything like that. But I feel like typically when it's the girls, they kind of try to go for like that cutesy feel and stuff like that. Or they try to go for like a, a style difference or anything like that. But I, I feel like if we had like a girl group that really just focused on their vocals, harmonization, and had like a solid pop feel to them, I, 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 I mean, it'd be pretty solid. I mean, I guess you do have like the AKB 48s and stuff. I, I don't know what they're doing. So, but the, the male groups is like, I love the vocal work. I love like the harmonization. I love the feel of them. The, everything that I would like about like rock music where it's the, you know, the band coming together to create a sound. You, you have that in boy groups, but instead of it being like the individual instruments, you have the vocalists coming together to create a harmonization of sound too. And so like, it just, I just, I've, I've lo- I fell in love with it, you know, it's like, I just, I can't get enough of it. And so, you know. No, it just winds up being what I like. Regardless, Stand Up sold a lovely 15,353 points. And continuing on to number four, it is Gorenge by Lisa. Nothing much we can say here. It's getting very, very obvious that 
we're gonna start the year with Karenge, and we're gonna end the year probably with Karenge as well. Yeah, because this thing hasn't moved in a while. So yeah, it'll, yeah, it's been it's, it's, at it's been least pretty solid. It, it's been for at least three to four straight weeks. So, <laughs> but yeah, regardless, this week it sold their lovely seventeen thousand eight hundred ninety four points, and continuing on up to number three, it is Kusui by Aito. Nothing much more we can say. I'm looking forward to his next release. So there's that. And these three, like two, three, and four, marketed it up very well throughout this whole stay at home movement thing that yep. Japan was going through. So it ended up being very fruitous for them. So, and congratulations on there at that point. But regardless, Kusui sold this week. 24,009 points and going on up to number two it is Yoruni Kakeru by Yao Sobi and like I said with Kusui Yoruni Kakeru really really benefited on that it wasn't really going up against anything really too major and overabundant of the market like it would have been if they didn't have this stay at home thing and it's good to put Yao Sobi on the map because she is highly underrated until now which is really good and she needs to be pushed up into a limelight i think yeah it's been very like i agree with you it's been very fortuitous this the situation that you know that they've been put into and you know it, it kind of sucks all in all that you know this has kind of happened but you know it's, it's always good to find silver linings and dark clouds and you know hopefully you know we'll see the effects of this on their next release and they'll be you know more pro hopefully they'll be more prominently featured uh later on down the road so you know if that happens and it was you know very good for these artists but yeah with that this week yoda nika sold a lovely thirty-two thousand three hundred and seventy-eight points and continuing on up to number one it is mazy knights by king and prince so what did you think of this track it was really, really good. It was a very, very good track. I think it is a King and Prince kind of sticking really to what they do well. And, you know, they have they have pretty good vocals, uh, vocal work. These guys work together really well as a unit. And, I mean, they're, they, they do have the Johnny's brand backing them, which is a really good thing because, you know, it just helps them get really big and... You know they're they're good they're they're very solid I, I you know like I think in a lot of ways um, King and Prince uh, it might be a little early to say this but I I really get like they're going to be like the next Arashi I, may, I might be calling it too soon on that but I I think you know they they are going to fill those shoes especially when Arashi does eventually go on hiatus I think. You know the, the you know the juniors are gonna really be the ones that step up and and you know take that mantle and I think King and Prince is going to just be the powerhouse that takes over after Arashi leaves. I mean they they've been strong since they've debuted and they've never had a weak uh, song hit number one. They, I mean every song they've hit that, that they've done is hit number one. And it's usually with good reason. Like it's not just the Johnny brand, Johnny's brand that's propelling them to number one. And I mean, even their numbers, like they outperform some of the Johnny seniors uh, on a regular basis. Like these guys are great. They're fantastic. And if you're a King and Prince fan, uh, Maisie Knight, you, there's no reason why you shouldn't go out and pick this up. It is a great single. Now, it's interesting that you think that they're going to be the next Arashi. It, it's kind of too soon to say because this is their second year. So I wouldn't take that upon them until at least their fifth year. What's going to happen? Because a lot of these Johnny's groups, they end up doing very well. But then they kind of just peter out. And it just depends on how the industry is. And y you have... Not only King and Prince, but you have you have Six Tones and Snowman also that might take that spot as well. Because I keep, I keep forgetting they're Johnnies. Yeah, <laughs> I keep you, you, forgetting they are Johnnies. You might think that they're not Johnnies, but yeah, they're still in the Johnny system, and yes. it's interesting that 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 happens. So, uh, 
we don't know because Six Tone versus Snowman, Imitation Ray and DD sold fan freaking tastic. It sold yeah, it, more it than it sold more than than Cinderella Girl. Yeah, it, to the point that they broke records for Johnny's debuts. So, but but stylistically, they stylistically, I don't know. They remind me a lot more of like Exile or just something. Well, like the Avex. We, we can't we, we can't judge them on the first track. Let's yeah. just say that much. We have, yeah. we have to wait till a couple at least two to three to kind of peg their style. True. Closest style, I mean, King and Prince is traditional Johnny style. And I can see where you're going with that. But the Johnnies, the juniors have been freaking amazing as of late. That's, because that's all you, true, too. Because you got Johnny's West, who's also been upping their game and been fairly successful. Beforehand, we didn't really listen or really care about Johnny's West all that much. But their last two to three singles have been out of the park each time they showed up. So, yeah, I really wish Hey Say Jump was on Apple Music. Like It, it kind of kills me they're not on there. Yeah, and and, and it, it is what it is for Johnny's sake, because Johnny's is still kind of breaking out of their shell. But I, I I don't see why. Eventually, it's going to be that all of it is going to be available on digital media. But they are the one true facet that physical sales is going to drive the market. So that's one way to look at it, I guess. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Maisie Night for me was really good. I ended up really, really liking it. It's fairly solid. They put their vocal skills on blast and showed off a little bit of their dance skills as well. And I don't know if it isn't there. Koi Wazure was a really solid track for me, and I don't know if it bumped it off as of yet, but it's a fairly close second. Cinderella Girl is always going to be number one in my mind for oh, yeah. their best track. So nothing is going to pump to that. Now, like, if we were judging them off their first single, then, yeah, I would say they're Odyssey 2.0. They were set to be Odyssey 2.0, but I don't know about now because they kind of are experimenting. So, but we'll see. Like I said, it, we can't really judge them. Their career is just starting to take off, and I can't wait to see what's the future in, in, is in store for King and Prince because... We get to see them grow overall, hopefully, if we continue doing this for a long time, and I hope we do, we get to see their careers grow, and that's one of the fascinating things that I like to do for this. Oh, yeah, it's really interesting to see the career and how they grow and stuff like that. That's like one of the beauties of doing the podcast is, you know, we're here every week and we get to talk about it and we get to, you know, go along that that journey so in like 10 years, you know, you know, you know, it'll be interesting to see like where they are from where they are right now. It'll be very fascinating. But yeah, regardless, Maisie Knight sold a amazing 518,262 points. You know, they kind of been keeping up their market of any release. At the, any release that they've done has been over 400,000. So it's been fan freaking tastic for them. So good on them. But with that, let's continue on to the albums here. Nothing much that I can really say here. You got Ceremony again. You, you got Nocturnal by New Test. You got a lot of Korean groups, actually. We are Us, first, first mini album by Super Junior KRY. That's one of their mini groups for Super Junior. I'm, I'm surprised that KRY is still together, but I guess all their military st stuff is done. You got Always Soda She Dream by Sky Peace. You got Traveler by Official Higginotism. Eyes once again by Millet. You got the Bohemian Rhapsody and Podemite by Hikawa Kyoshi. That's really good for, for physical media only, sailing at number two. For a tough track of, you know, breaking out out of the Inca image. It's very interesting for him to sell well, and I congratulate him for that. And once again, at number one, it is More and More by Twice. This is the Korean physical copy for the mini album. So, good on them. Good on Twice once again. But yeah, with that, I want to say thank you for this listening to this week's episode of Ongaku to You. You can find us at all the lovely 
social media sites at Twitter and Instagram at ongaku.du. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, just look up ongaku.du. You can find out all our episodes there in YouTube form. An exclusive anime, winter anime theme song only episode that you can only find on YouTube. So look forward to that. And you can also check out the website at ongaku.du.com. You can also find our three affiliates. Karyu Hunter, he is a t- horror Twitch streamer who's going through all the lovely spooky games. You can check him out at twitch.tv slash Karyu Hunter. K-Y-O-R-Y-U-H-U-N-T-E-R. You can also check out our other affiliate, TimberTaff, who is a Twitch streamer in his own right going through the lovely Witcher series. And you can check him out at twitch.tv slash TimberTaff, T-I-M-B-R-T-A-F-T. You can also follow our other affiliate, Rose, who is Luna's sister. And she goes through the lovely Minecraft, a couple drawing stuff, Monster Hunter World, and RuneScape. You can check her out at twitch.tv slash RainStarKitty, R-A-I-N-S-T-A-R-K-I-T-T-Y. And you can follow the lovely podcast that I do with Lou and Timber called Podasaurus. It is a gaming podcast, but we kind of just shoot the shit and talk about random stuff that is tangentially related to gaming. But yeah, you can check that out. Just look up Koryu Hunter, same as his name, on all podcast media services, so you can check that out as well. You can find me on Twitter at OTYCan1. You can find Renford at Renford D. You can find Luna at LunaMarie87. And where can we find you, Gray? You can find me on Twitter at OngakuGray, where I tweet about what I'm watching, what I'm playing, all what I'm listening to, all that fun jazz. So follow me there. But yeah, with that, I want to say thank you so much once again for listening to this week's episode of Ongaku to You. I'm your host, Ken, saying thank you very much and have a great day. Aloha. And this is great. Hope everybody stays safe out there and we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.